Well, welcome everyone to Josh's Severe Weather. I'm a meteorologist in the Raleigh area. Hope you're doing well this week. We are five days into our new Atlantic hurricane season and uh, the beginning of what is a marathon, not a sprint. Uh, right now, things are looking okay across the Atlantic Basin. In the Pacific, we're watching for some slow development over the next couple of days south of Mexico. Uh, but that's not going to last that way forever. So my video today is going to cover uh, what we're seeing out there today and what looks like it may change over the next couple of weeks and what some of the models are showing, at least in the shorter to medium range. Uh, before we go further, if you have not yet become a subscriber of Josh's Severe Weather, I urge you to do so, as I plan to give you all more frequent updates once we get closer to the meat of the season. Uh, and this season is expected to, again, be potentially a significant one, depending on where, of course, you live. Uh, but it's never too early to get ready for a uh, hurricane season if you're in areas that are typically prone to tropical systems. And this season in particular, I am worried about the East Coast, but I am always worried about the Gulf Coast and those in the Caribbean as well. Uh, and obviously other areas that typically get tropical systems. But the East Coast this year looks like it could be in for a more active year back like we saw in 2018 and 2019. Uh, so let me share my screen with you all here, and we're going to take a look at the current satellite image first from Tropical Dippets. And uh, you can see here, uh, things are relatively quiet for the time being. Uh, we do have uh, low pressure attached to a front over the southeastern United States. That's produced some pretty heavy rain over parts of North Carolina today. Uh, and more showers and storms flaring up over parts of Georgia and Florida. I'll zoom in on that in a little bit here to show that to you further. Um, elsewhere, though, the Gulf is fairly quiet. Most of the Caribbean is quiet as well. We are starting to, though, watch a flare up of showers and storms on both sides of Central America. And this is the area that uh, some of our models did jump the gun on a little bit earlier uh, over the last week. I've talked about it here. And, and, and please don't... Um, get too carried away with what you see online because it will likely change in the longer range. But my goal is to at least bring it up with you and talk, talk to you about what it's showing, why it's showing that, what can go right, what can go wrong with that forecast. Uh, but right now uh, we do have just a couple of areas spinning up off the Pacific uh, coast of Mexico here that we are watching for slow development. The second area actually looks like it has a little bit better shot at forming into something tropical like a depression or a storm than the first one here farther out. On the Caribbean side, we do watch this area of showers and storms, uh, which is near Costa Rica and southern portions of Nicaragua. But right now, it's not exactly in a favorable area to develop other than producing some heavy rain and storms with it. Uh, here is a look at our ocean heat content from University of Miami. And you can see uh, the waters have certainly gotten warm enough to support tropical activity. Basically, anywhere you see here in the green and lighter blue color, uh, our most heat content, which we typically would expect this time of the year, uh, is across portions of the Northwest Caribbean and the Southeastern Gulf of America. And uh, the waters certainly are warm enough to support a more significant storm here. Now, uh, the upper level environment and the amount of moisture have to be in play for that to happen. Right now, that is not currently the case, but that could change. Uh, and the reason why, as you see here, a lot of uh, dusty, dry air coming in from a couple of different locations. Uh, we have Saharan dust here uh, off of the Atlant uh, African coast that continues to push west in pulses. Uh, one of those pulses has now entered the northeastern and central portions of the Caribbean. Uh, the one that hit that area a few days ago is in the western Gulf right now to the south of Louisiana and Texas. And we also have a fair amount of dry air coming down from Canada here in the form of wildfires. Uh, let me uh, change that color up so you all can see it a little bit better here. Uh, but we have some significant dry air coming down as well into the northwestern Atlantic. And that has hampered air quality over portions of the northeast, the Midwest, and even portions of the southeast this week. I want to show you this wind shear map, and the area in red indicates unfavorable wind shear. Now, the United States uh, is right here. This is the eastern U.S., and of course, we have a lot of wind shear. That's also responsible for some of the nasty weather we're seeing in parts of the eastern and lower Great Lakes and, of course, the southern plains today. But really, the only areas where the wind shear is low enough to support tropical activity are over the Pacific here. Uh, and near Central America. And of course, you have land masses to deal with there. And then this one area that is basically parked just off of the Carolina coast, this is Charleston, South Carolina right here, has low wind shear for the time being. However, um, it's a little more complicated than just that. We do, in fact, uh, have uh, a front that's interacting with land. So while the wind shear is low, 
uh, the likelihood of development here is also low. And here's a closer look at the Western Atlantic to show you what's going on here. And you can see there is an upper level low that is spinning up over the southern Appalachians. Here's where the twist is right between Asheville and Hickory, North Carolina. And we do have a boundary that is basically stretched from the northeastern Gulf into the Carolinas here. And weak area of low pressure has formed along this right about here. And that is enhancing the rate of rainfall here across the eastern portions of South Carolina and in particular over coastal North Carolina. And then in parts of the Triangle, we've seen heavy rain, especially in Lee and Harnett counties uh, this afternoon where there have been some flash flood warnings uh, in effect. Now, just because the upper level low is here and it's drawing up moisture from the Gulf Stream doesn't necessarily mean we're going to have development, even if the wind shear is low. Uh, what's going on is we just can't get an actual circulation going over water. Uh, eventually, that may happen, but if it does and when it does, it's probably moving away from land and into much cooler water and in an area here where we have smoke coming down from the wildfires. So both of those are actually going to go against favoring any kind of real tropical activity. And so the area we watched a couple of days turn into a 10% area has, of course, faded off the map because it just hasn't been able to form. And the only other system on the map that really looks like it's got any kind of uh, nice spin to it or any kind of circulation to it is to the southeast of Nova Scotia here. And uh, that is, of course, over much cooler water. So it is very unlikely to develop any kind of tropical characteristics. So we're in pretty good shape over the Western Atlantic. Now, in the Gulf of America, you can see things are very quiet right now. Uh, high wind shear coming in from the north. Not a lot of moisture in place. The western and central Gulf are actually fairly dry. Really, all the only rain we're dealing with is over the Florida panhandle, southern Georgia, and, of course, over parts of south Florida as well. But really nothing showing anything favorable for any development. And then finally, I'm going to take you down to Central America and the Caribbean. And again, I talked about this area of thunderstorms that we have been watching for potential development, and it's just not really getting its act together yet. There's really no low-level circulation. It's just really a flare-up of unsettled weather for the time being. And when you look north of this, you can see quite a bit of westerly flow here over the northwestern Caribbean and moving right against the trades here into the eastern Caribbean. So really, at this point, we're in pretty good shape as far as any kind of tropical development. The only areas we're watching are in the Pacific. We've got an area that could become our next depression or storm by the time we head into the weekend and early next week. The next name on the list would be Barbara. We just had Alvin. This one is kind of following suit. Um, so we're going to keep an eye on that for the time being. And then this other area has about a 30% chance of developing, but it will be a fish storm. Uh, elsewhere, the Atlantic, we have no expected tropical development over the next seven days. And um, I think we're going to stay that way, at least for the through the weekend. Next week, we might see some some things picking up here. Uh, now, this is a look at the seasonal forecast and how we've done over the last couple of years. And you can see the European seasonal forecast was way underdone uh, back in 2017, 2018, right through 2020 and 2021. But over the last few years, it's actually corrected and uh, we've had fewer storms and forecasts over the last few seasons. So this year's forecast is about 14 to 15 named storms from the European model, uh, at least from June through November. It doesn't mean there couldn't be something in December, of course, uh, but it puts us near just above the average for the Atlantic Basin. Uh, now, the last time we had a forecast that looked like it was be pretty average uh, and it didn't end up that way was 2005 when we had at the time, our most active season, that was the year that we had hurricanes, Katrina, Rita, and many other storms. Uh, in fact, the number of uh, observed storms was almost twice what was forecast. And if you go back to 2020 and 2021, that was pretty much also the case. So some very active seasons that maybe weren't expected to be. And then we've had some well-behaved forecasts here, at least going back about 10 years. And then recently, Last year was expected to be a lot more active than it ended up being. It was still a, an impactful season for those in Florida, but the forecast kind of missed the mark. So we're hoping this year that maybe the forecast doesn't miss the mark by too much. And of course, we want to make sure that uh, anybody within the affected areas uh, needs to be on the lookout for tropical development here and perhaps a quickly spinning up storm. It sounds like fluff. I realize that, but I wanted to at least bring that up so you all can see the value in seasonal forecasts. And then you can also see maybe how bad those forecasts end up being over time because they are, in fact, seasonal forecasts. All right, from the Climate Prediction Center, the area to watch, at least in the next week, is on the Pacific side of Mexico, but we do have some possibilities for development, uh, at least 20% or so here over the Southern Gulf and the Northwest Caribbean. That's going to be next week. The following week, we're going to monitor the same exact area here, but it does shift a little bit farther to the west. 
uh, to the Pacific side of Mexico. Still looks like it's going to be wet, though, over the western and southwestern Gulf and Bay of Campeche. Uh, but for the rest of the Caribbean, really not much expected to form. Uh, same goes for the East Coast. The areas that could be busier, at least in the next week, will be on the Mexican side here, the Pacific uh, Ocean side of Mexico, that is. I'm sorry. And uh, maybe some possible development here somewhere around the northern Philippines and the South China Sea as well. And we take a look here at some of our forecast models, which, in my opinion, have really not done great for us and haven't helped a whole lot. Uh, but as we take a look at the MJO, you can see most of the uh, rising motion is on the Western Pacific side for the time being. Now, we are going to see this pulse eastward here towards the Eastern Pacific and Central America by the time we get to Sunday and Monday. And then we see more lifting in the southwestern portion of the Caribbean by the beginning of next week. And that means things could become a little bit more favorable for tropical development in that area uh, centered around Central America, the Western Caribbean and the Southern Gulf. This is just one model, though. It's a GFS model, and you can see it actually gets awfully aggressive here when we get into the following week, around the 17th and 18th, right after Father's Day. And then we see a quieter, potential quieter phase coming after we get past the 20th or so. But that does not agree here uh, with the zonal harmonics, which we're showing a lot more potential action here in the next couple of weeks, but have backed off. So we have a big disagreement over the next couple of weeks of how this may play out. So uh, forecast models, at least when we go past a week, just aren't going to do a very good job until we start to see them coming together with better agreement. And here's a reason why. If you take a look here at the MJO, Madden-Julian Oscillation, uh, right now it's in uh, phase seven, which means all of our activities on the Western Pacific side that we need to really be concerned with. Uh, it does come into more favorable phases here, uh, phases eight, one, and two. These are favorable uh, for development in the uh, Western Gulf, the Caribbean, and on the Pacific side. But the one thing that has changed since my video around this time last week is that instead of coming all the way out in here where things definitely could be more favorable, we're seeing them shift back into the neutral zone here where it's a lot less likely to see an enhanced uh, phase of, fun of uh, tropical activity. And it's tough to get that to happen this early in the season. Um, if we have a very active phase, like we did around the time we had Hurricane Barrel last year, then what we really need to do is see this line come all the way down into here, and it's just not there. So uh, I'm not saying we're we're going to be completely void of tropical activity, but the the setup for a major storm over the next few weeks just isn't there. And I don't expect that it will be there, at least for the time being. So the GFS model, which has uh, gotten people's attention early, like it typically does, has backed off. And you can see right now, development chances over the next six to seven days are not super great. And if they happen, they're more than likely going to be on the Pacific side than on the uh, Caribbean side here. You can kind of see here, really only one ensemble member showing anything past tropical storm intensity. And then as we move this along further uh, past next week into the following weekend, we do have some solutions that pull something up into the Western and Central Gulf. But a few days ago, Florida was the target zone. Now you can see it's more likely Mexico or possibly South Texas. And of all the ensembles run this morning, only two of them are showing a potential hurricane in the Gulf out of uh, over uh, 50 members here. So it's very unlikely we're going to see a hurricane forming in and moving into the Gulf over the next few weeks. However, it's not impossible at this point. I just don't really think it's going to happen. Uh, and you can see the GFS operational model. This has gotten shared quite a bit. Uh, in my opinion, once we get to about 240 hours, we should really just kill this model because it has some major inherent flaws in the medium range beyond 240 model uh, hours. And uh, it does show a weaker system moving into the Western Gulf here, but it's been awfully inconsistent in that. If you go back to this morning's run here, the 6C run, um, you can see that... Um, well, it was also showing something. It was just a much different look here. In fact, showing something heading towards Florida. The run before that uh, was a little bit wilder here. It had a hurricane kind of spinning around and hitting Florida uh, from the southwest. So you can see it just a couple of models. We've gone from a hurricane near Sarasota to barely a tropical system here near Belize. Very unlikely we're going to have something in the next a couple of weeks. And that model proves to us that it just can't be trusted. The European model also shows a bit of a flare up here, but it just doesn't really develop anything uh, on the Atlantic side here. All of its development is going to be on the Pacific side, south of Acapulco, 
uh, later next week into next weekend. And finally, I'll show you the Canadian model because I promised I would. No, I didn't, but I'm going to show it to you anyway. And when the Canadian and the GFS start to agree, that's when I start to get more concerned. But right now, that is not the case. The Canadian has a tropical storm here in the Pacific next week, moving away from Mexico, maybe a weak hurricane, and then maybe another system following after that. But it does not have any development over the next 10 days in the uh, Gulf of America or the Caribbean Sea. So I think we're in pretty good shape for the time being, but we still need to be watching, obviously. And this could certainly still change. This is my disclaimer that this awfully this changes awfully much here, this portion of the season. Uh, we haven't really seen a lot of consistency in June in the models in quite some time. So that's all I've got to share with you today. I do want to close this out with the word of God for the people of God. I am a Christian man, and even though I have been called to give you all weather reports and to do my best to make sure folks are prepared uh, for the unknowns and the knowns, uh, at the end of the day, the only thing I do know is that we are all sinners. Paul tells the church of Rome that for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. And that is Romans 3, 23, 24, New King James Version. We're all sinners, whether or not we choose to believe in God, but those who have put on Christ, those who have accepted Christ as their Savior, have been redeemed and will be given the gift of eternal life in heaven with Jesus Christ. Jesus is coming again, whether or not you choose to believe that, but uh, it's really tough to believe something until you see it. And I truly believe that. In fact, for the first 30 or so years of my life, I was not a Christian. I was uh, really just not a, a believer at all. Uh, but what I've learned over time is that God still shows himself through Jesus. Uh, miracles happen. Good deeds happen all the time. And things that you just can't explain using science and logic happen. And I truly believe over time that God has led me to see that. Uh, that those miracles can and will continue to happen because he is a good God. As much as I've sinned, I don't deserve what he's got coming for me or for other believers, but he has still given me that grace. And I wanted to share that good news with you today because I really hope that that resonated with somebody here that came to me on YouTube today because it truly does matter. Uh, so I will be back on here soon, but I hope everybody has a wonderful evening. God bless you.